Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and this video is going to be a little bit more disjointed than most. And as such, it shouldn't be treated as a tutorial, but more of a bringing you along on the journey, kind of showing you my thought process, how I think about things, how I think about problems, and how I maybe fix them. And this project all begins with Kings of War Armada. Yes, I'm talking about Armada again. I like this game, okay? Well, each of the ships comes with a wooden base, and the starter game include a bunch of card terrain, island sections, sandbanks, and rocks. Which for new players just getting into tabletop wargaming, or anyone new to naval games like me, that's great. All you need to get started is included. However, as a maker, model maker, mini painter, and all of the other names you can apply to a person that has over 200 unpainted models, I, of course, want to make some sea-based terrain This is a little more three-dimensional than these card outlines. Once I've done some of that, then maybe the ship bases could be made to match. Making a Model C of Quartz probably wants some clear resin. This isn't the only way to do it, but I'll give it a go like this to begin with. For a successful resin pour, you need something to pour into something like a mold. For a successful mold, you need an original version or a blank, which is all awfully long-winded. Thankfully, the Armada rulebook includes all of the base sizes for the ships, and those ship base sizes are appropriate for some, maybe not all, of the terrain, particularly the sandbanks and rocks, so certainly a good starting point. Well, long story short, too late, I 3D printed a bunch of tiles, sanded the ever-living feth out of them until they were smooth, so sanding is my life now. I took the idea that the more I sanded the originals, the less I would have to sand each piece of resin as they came out of the moulds made from the original tiles, and just using a small plastic pot to be my mould for the mould. And of course, this little setup phase went without any issues, except for all of the issues. The biggest of which was that these two tiles, uh, a tiny and a large size, floated, which somewhat ruined the mould. However, I can still use this particular mould for testing some other techniques, and I'll make a replacement mould for these two sizes later on. But now that we've got however far into this video we've got, just talking about the basic setup stuff, let's actually talk about making some pieces. And what better place to start than the easiest, right? Well, no, because actually I started off with sandbanks and it turns out sand is really hard to do in scale. First of all, I used super glue and baking powder, which I then painted in a sandy tan color. Should work nicely, right? Wrong. Super glue somehow sticks to silicon. Amazing, as nothing is supposed to stick to silicon. Apparently, super glue does. Well, Attempt number two, PVA mixed with baking powder and some paint mixed in to save me an extra step. Well, as the water evaporates out of PVA, it shrinks and peels and cracks. Oh, fuck. Yeah. We'll come back to that later. For now, I have another issue arising. As curing resin is still a liquid with quite a strong surface tension, you get these curved edges inside a mold which then sets in that shape as the resin cures. So sanding is my life now. Again. To ensure a smooth effect, I sanded up the grades in small increments. 200, 400, 600, 800, 1500, 3000, again 3000 wet. After all of that, it still wasn't quite perfectly smooth and translucent. So an additional super rare, highly specialized polishing compound toothpaste and they seem to look pretty good like that. But now that I've got the whole process sorted out, let's make some more interesting pieces. Oh look, rocks. I think you already saw those. Literally just rocks painted to look like slightly different rocks. How about some boats instead? Well, I popped around on Thingiverse and found some various boats and small ships and ran them off of my resin printer and gave them a quick paint job. This small ship will make for a nice merchant for convoy games. And also this utterly tiny rowing boat that can be used as a launch for games involving islands. 
like a scenario where your chief surgeon gets shot accidentally and has to go on shore to operate on themselves. But really, there's one thing far cooler than any of these boats. Going back to the rulebook, there is this specific mission scenario. Pump Kraken. Well then. Again, I popped around on Thingiverse for a Kraken head and some tentacles to print out, and then started painting. And now I think we should probably relax for a little bit. We've been roaring along at breakneck speed so far, going through every step of making resin sea tiles. Well, what's more relaxing than painting? I haven't even covered all of the important details of my resin sea making expedition. I'll cover some more of that later on. I did warn you that this video would be disjointed. Well, purple here is one of my favorite colors, but I rarely paint anything that warrants purple. For a Kraken, well, that can certainly be purple. I even used my favorite technique of wet blending in some pink for some highlights. But also base coating pink on the underside of the tentacles and wet blending the transition. An appropriate technique for an oceanic monster whose entire existence is um, wet. All of these SLA printed pieces are free to use files from Thingiverse. I'll do my best to track down all of them and make a long list in the description. If I've missed one, ask in the comments and I'll see about finding the ones that are missing. There's a whole world of digital sculptors out there making all sorts of wonderful things. I myself dabble. I'm nowhere near at that skill level. To encourage myself to keep learning, to keep practicing and pushing my skills and my abilities, I livestream each week, either Monday or Wednesday night usually. If you'd like to see my digital model making, uh, honestly at an in intermediate level, keep your eyes peeled for that. After throwing in some more pink to the head as edge highlights to pick out all of the detail that had been digitally sculpted, purple and pink works very nicely together and will even contrast with the muted bluey green that the sea resin will be. However, for the eyes, those big pretty eyes, something a little stronger more saturated was called for. A saturated green with a tiny stripe of black for that alien snake dragon style eye that seems to put the fright in us weakling humans. But now that the Kraken is painted, let's go into a little more detail on how the resin pour itself works. There are a wide variety of two-part resins, and I only know a little bit about them, but I can share some pointers. Particularly, the type of resin to choose can be important for this project, or similar. A resin that doesn't react badly with inks is vital because I'm colouring it to give it a greeny-blue sea colour. Also, as these pieces are translucent, I would recommend a low viscosity, long cure time resin, as that can help with clearing bubbles. And for reference, the resin that I'm using has a 48 hour cure time. All of you impatient lot crying at that being far too long, but it really is worth it. Pour the resin, leave it for two days, and get on with some other part of the project. Or paint another model from your pile of opportunity, do some terrain, all that is about workflow and practice. You can tell from the different colors in the pieces that I've made that I've experimented a little with how much ink and what variations of blue and yellow to use to make the green. As I was setting up for another pour, I had a fancy thought to combat the pulling up the side of the mold. As the pulled material forms the lip around the edge, why not treat that as a bowl of sorts and do a second pour inside of that. Sounds like a thousand IQ move, right? Well, it helped, but it wasn't quite perfect. I estimate that it cut my sanding time in half roughly, but the extra work of doing two resin pours and the time it took sort of balanced out. 
And once the corners were sanded out, even up to the toothpaste polish, there's still just that slight difference in texture between where it's been sanded and where the resin has cured directly. Well, I came up with another little trick that helped far more. Gloss varnish. Varnishes, lacquers, sealants, and all these kind of things are used to put a protective coat over paint, usually, other things as well. But resin surely is hard enough that it's not needed. However, varnishes also change the surface finish. And a glossy surface finish fills in all the micro imperfections left after sanding and makes for a wet look. The sea is wet, and so that made sense to me. By this point, with all of my practice and the tricks that I've learned, I have enough confidence in my process to risk dropping in one of the ships into some resin. Practice is good. Prepare yourself, prepare the model, and prepare your process. But you do have to put the model on the line and get some work done eventually. And so the Basellian Gurpanther gets my first resin base, even with a two-stage pour, the edges pulled a little, so after all of the sanding and the polish and the varnish, finally, we have a ship afloat. So, thank you very much for all coming along on the journey. I have made all sorts of random pieces. Some of them even look good. Not all of them, of course. My experimentation and learning process, as disjointed as it is, I hope that you have enjoyed the video so far. If you have any suggestions or comments about what to do next, particularly if you have any ideas on how to do wave effects, which are sorely lacking from some of these, particularly waves breaking on the rocks, need to do some of that. And on the way to the comments section, you should pop past the description where there's a whole bunch of links to the other stuff that I get up to. And hopefully soon I'll be showing off something I'm going to do with the 75 by 75 millimeter mold that I made for the Kraken. Because while it is the correct size for the Kraken, it's also an appropriate size for some island tiles. And so that will come in handy for some larger pieces. And now that I've experimented with different ways of doing sand, I'm sure I can get something that looks a little better than these. And people keep telling me I need to put a sail on this one. Um, you're right. I'll get round to it. But with all that said, and all these resin pieces built, I'm Edgar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.